Even though we're winning this fight, we're still. Oh, that's such a bizarre. This is so new to me. What the this hell? Is <laughs> this is This is this is this is what Mavers are. So yeah, you win before... the fight and you lose nine k. I'm going to be trying something a little different today. This is a video on Valve's new shooter MOBA, Deadlock. For those that don't know me, I've been working professionally as a League of Legends coach since 2013. And this video is a segment of a recent stream I did with Alex. Alex is a Valorant coach who I've been working with who's just getting into the game and who's struggling with the MOBA aspects of it. The first half of the stream, we looked at a League of Legends game, but for this video, we're looking at the VOD of one of his recent scrims in Deadlock, just focused purely on tempo and on how people move around the map. Let me know what you think, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so for some context, again, it's just PvP trials. Yeah. Um, we have I, we do not win this game, I'm pretty sure. We don't do very well. Okay. Well, no, I think we did We did okay. This is the, one, the best one that we did in, uh, but it still didn't come on top. Yeah, and you're the blue team? Um. Yes. With okay. this team up here. Yeah. So from a team comp point of view, I think it looks better to, to me. Mm -hmm. First of all. Um, so yeah, we've got. They two. Yeah. So we've got. So we've we, we've called it. Um. First, second, third carry. Okay. Tank support tank. Um. Yeah. So we've basically got three. Hang on, no. So this, so this is our primary carry here. Mm -hmm. Raph, quite good. Um, this is our second carry, and this is our third carry. Mm -hmm. This guy's playing alone. This guy's playing alone. This guy is with Bebop. I'm pretty sure. No, this guy's with Ivy. Uh -huh. And these and two are together. Bebop. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, here I would say you probably do have a, a lot of tools to get on them, right? And you also have yeah. the, the Vindictor range as well. So. This this game's mostly going to be from the POV of the Abrams. Yeah, but like I say, I think it can be... Maybe it's better to even just look at it from this mini-map view. And, uh, yeah. Do I keep comms or get rid of it? Uh, keep it for now and we can turn it back on and look look if we're interested in something. So keep, keep it on? Or keep Sorry, it turn it off for now and then we'll turn it back yeah. on if... Um... Okay, cool. So, Oops, sorry, this is I'm flicking to my. Uh, yeah. I'll skip ahead. It's all right. Okay. So, th this is where, like, it's useful to know who's going to get pushed and where. Um, is... So, like, matchups wise, are we going to get pushed or are they going to get pushed? Depending on things. That's what we need to know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, eventually, it, it, it might be a bit silly to start thinking about that now because it'll be so dependent on the people. But mm -hmm. that is eventually what you need to be thinking because then you can start to think okay where can we move from where can we you know is abrams going to get pushed into haze all the time in which case you can just perma try and gank this paradox and uh kelvin but you know which which of those lanes is easier to gank all that kind of thing mm -hmm. wait but this committing to a lane thing means that let's say let's say you really wanted your iv Vindictor to play up against Grey Talon and um, McGuinness, they can't swap. Just full swap, two and two. Because you won't see what lanes the enemies have gone until you've picked lanes. Yeah. I'm that's pretty horrible. sure that's, that's how it is. That is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that's so like brute force way you to get what they want. You could be going into a two versus one hypothetically and a one versus two. And then this one person has to be really passive because he's playing against a two. They could bring someone over here. That could be that quite funny. That... Yeah, but then they have to they... share. <laughs> they have to share it. Yeah. Maybe you do start doing two, one, one, two and just see what happens. Because if you're practiced. To force people out here. Yeah. Exactly. And if you're practiced at 1v2ing and they're not, then you're going to have a massive advantage. So in, in, in League of Legends, you do lane swaps where mm. they've set up the game. So you really want to have two people in bot lane. But this year, for example, or I guess, no, yeah, this year, um, one of the teams in Europe just decided to bring back lane swaps and just say, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to put two people top and we'll two against one and you'll two against one. But because yeah, so we practiced they, they... at it, we'll be better at it. <laughs> so so it's not if, we did a, if we did a two, one, one, two, 
yeah. then either they would be in a one versus two, which means we are oppressive and they're going to have a really hard time. Yeah. Or they got to bring someone over here to match them, but we're probably going to come out on top but, anyway because we won't be sharing gold. Yeah, but it will be less efficient because they'll have 1v2 in the middle lanes, which should be better. But the point, it, so this is like a, it's cheesing, we, we would call it. Mm. So it's literally like a suboptimal strategy that could still work because you're more used to it. So it gives yeah. you like, more, you, there's more variance in it. You would maybe do this against the, if you're playing some insanely good team who's like winning everything. Then sure, mm. do it to throw them off. Like it's uh, it's worth we could trying. Run, we could run a hero who's going to uh, a solo solo hero exactly. in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Who are who are quite who a lot of wave clear and safe. Quite good yeah, against exactly, um, exactly. Two people, and yeah. and they you might catch someone on the sideline who's terrible one v two. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, this this part is going to be more just about the kind of skill of the. The, the players that you've got uh, and the players that you're playing against. So like die 2v2, that would almost, in, in like it, it, you notice in that game, no one died 1v1 or 2v2. They always died yeah. from, from that number. That's, that's what all MOBAs I think will tend towards, I have to say. Um, you shouldn't, so, shouldn't die early on this time. You shouldn't die side. 1v1 or 2v2 ever, really. It'll happen occasionally, but it's a mistake to die when you're not being outnumbered, basically. Um so, for example, here, if we just pause it, your Vindicta mm -hmm. and Ivy got a great push just as two minutes was coming. So, mm -hmm. can we? Now they go, can they go and steal the enemy the jungle, for example? Yeah, like that, that enemy enemy camp that's just spawned, or does one of them need to go to help lane two because uh, we're being, being pushed in, here, kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. So. Those are the kind of questions I think that's always worth to be thinking about. We need to about. test it, yeah. Yeah, and I would say, maybe it's wrong, but I would say for now, have hitting the tower as your lowest priority. Because mm -hmm. until you need flex slots, getting all those four towers doesn't give you a huge amount. Like it gives yeah. you some gold, but not as much gold as the other things. Uh, sorry, I keep saying gold. Souls. That's okay, I get um, So it depends. I, I don't know, but I'm assuming getting towers gets you less gold than mm. taking all the other stuff. But also, you wouldn't know until you tried. So, okay. good to continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, already we've got one lane that's like very far ahead, which is great. See, now the enemy is going to take this jungle camp. So mm. we we lose the opportunity to not only take it, but to take it away from them. I do think, to be quite honest, this stage of deadlock is going to be more about learning matchups and finding counters and stuff like that. But yeah, it's still worth knowing this stuff so you can kind of be ahead of it and see what you... That's what I've set for the guys to do. Yeah. I mean, there's not a set roster. We've got at least three people I want them to grind in uh, in matchmaking. Um, just so they're as familiar as they can with it. Mm. So the question here in these kind of situations is, are we gaining more in lane three than we're losing in lane two? Mm -hmm. And if not, absolutely. To be honest, at this stage, pause, as soon as someone has to go back from one lane, if you have a ne lane next to them that's pushed, I would just have someone move. But that and might have changed. Move. That might have changed based on today, <laughs> unfortunately. But if it, in the time where you played this scrim, as soon as Infernus needs to back, one of uh, Ivy has to just go. Like you can't let someone one v two because what happens is now Bebop has to go back, and now by the time Bebop's back, Infernus might have to go back again. You know, like mm. it just keeps rolling, and so you can you can transition that. And actually, if you look, Kelvin's half HP, but you're not really forcing either of them to back. So. Now, I would say we're definitely losing more in lane two than we're gaining in lane three. And I can tell that not even based on looking, you know, like based on yeah. just what I can see on the map. Okay. So my, my, I, again, I guess Infernus is saying he's completely fine 1v2. So b <laughs> going to try for a cheesy little gank. It should be the other way around, though, really. Um, it should be you're here and one person coming over here. It depends. These guys, up. These guys it, playing underneath that tower. You would, you would think it would be easier, yeah. You would think the gank on those two is easier. And also maybe a bigger deal. 
at this stage mm -hmm. in the game because if you can kill them both and now Infernus is back in the game, suddenly it's like, you know, the only reason the gold is even is because we're losing one place, but we're winning another. Like we're, Vindicta is 1K up and yet the team is equal. Yeah. So it, it, it's not a bad idea that, to play to uh, your strong lane, but I think in this situation, it seems a bit silly. Yeah. Okay. Because also like, if you don't get anything, it's terrible to move because you're losing stuff for moving. So we did actually get a decent amount. We lost loads too. And they're just chasing eventually. Okay, they, so they get the paradox. But I would make sure these jungle camps are down. I, I, I mean, not maybe not necessarily including, right now. Including ours. Yeah, yeah. I just think yeah. having jungle camps sitting up is never a good idea. Same for them. You know, they've got a lane pushed up the whole time and they didn't take their own jungle camp. Mm hmm Especially with like McGuinness or something, it takes like 10 seconds. Or not even that. Yeah, so now Bebop's going all the way back to base and then all the way back out. And this is why we were talking, this is why, you know, we were talking about potential theoretical lanes. Mm -hmm. I was saying you take, you don't take a carry with someone like Bebop who wants to roam, you take someone who's good 1v2. Yeah. So you can just leave them. Yeah, so, I mean, lane two is a disaster. Like, if we lose this game, it's going to be based on lane two. Mm -hmm. And lane three is nowhere near as much of a disaster. Because later on, they're going to be really far behind, and these two here are going yeah. to be far ahead. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Vindicta is almost keeping up is more about her last hitting. Because they've lost the tower. They've got a bunch of kills. We didn't we didn't get there, and it's just like... If, if basically, I would... I think this is, again, actually a fine rule now that I think about it. If someone in your lane has to go back, if either lane next to you, either the solo lane or the duo lane is pushed up, mm -hmm. send someone to cover. Because the person who's pushed up can 1v2 because they just sit under tower and do nothing. Or they can go Even if it's jungle. a solo lane. Yeah, yeah sure. Oh, because if, if they pushed yeah, up, then if they're pushed, they they've got to... free time to do something. And you yeah. chipping the tower is nowhere near as good as stopping the role of like someone has to go back now the other person has to go back now the other person has to go yeah. back you know it's just horrible you need to try and have two people here to keep and up the pressure if you if you ever have to go back twice and you don't have your booster you're screwed you lose so much it takes so long also this is a bit off topic um, mm -hmm. i'm gonna oops one one hand cancel six you know that uh song that goes dancing dancing it's always <laughs> guys <laughs> um i can't remember the name of the song but in the music video they're basically just doing this <laughs> <laughs> okay back on topic flurry these so what i don't know what i what is ivy doing i jump back how are you how did we end up here so j jump back again to, to when ivy's yeah. like coming out of base basically or, or coming out of shop Okay, so they just got a pick, Ivy and uh Yeah, I'm ready to get another pick. See Infernus is already a little bit vulnerable there because there's nothing to fall back to. Mm. So if if Grey Talon had gone to that lane, then they might actually be in trouble. So now Ivy's moving in while Vindictor's moving to the side. So in the middle of the map, you're you're four v two. And you know that because you're outnumbering on one of the sides. Yeah, just right here in this box. You're four v two, and also Infernus is not that strong. He's two k down. No, one k down. <clears throat> so he gets away, and maybe Ivy gets away. Hypothetically, it's about yeah. to we're in this situation here, right? Shiv's coming back on lane one. Infernus pushed up lane two, and we know that they've pushed up here. These yeah. two could communicate for a two-on-one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just it, it's just everyone's doing their own thing, which is very mm -hmm. understandable. But how you might start to connect is everyone needs to know how tempo works. Yeah, and we use matchmaking so that everyone's very good at their own thing, and mm. then it'll be easier to connect them mm -hmm. and just practice. Yeah, practice yeah. Scrims. And then you'll start to work out what, what is worth moving for, how quickly can I move, mm. who is gankable, who is not gankable. Uh, 
yeah so so this whole this whole sequence is just and kind of a bit of a disaster ivy ivy goes forward while vindicta goes backwards to cover something else infernus is pushing up when we don't know who's there then ivy goes in to try and get out but i like ivy's strong but between the two of them they're never going to win that 2v2 mm. and this is why it's useful to watch it like this because if you watch it the other way you trick yourself that if you'd have just quickly played this better and what you tend to do is forget that yeah but what if the enemy also played it better <laughs> yeah <laughs> And this great talent like ult onto other sides is actually quite yeah that quite good. ult so, so great talent he she they he not, I he think. he can still have influence at least a little bit on another mm. lane without actually being there which means he's better in mid lane during strong. the lane phase yeah, yeah. exactly yeah hmm. is the equivalent champion in League of Legends who's a mid laner who whose ult can go to side lanes Ash uh, Zarath is what you play in mid oh I mean, yeah you can do the same with Ash but it's uh, she's a bot laner normally yeah. Okay, so Wraith 1v2s with the with the Grey Talon ult. Yeah. That's a very useful thing to know. I'll, that I'll that thing from Grey Talon, Talon is actually. big. You see, it looks like a paper aeroplane on the map. Yeah, there it is. That's quite funny. I'll, see, I'll look at the health. Look at Ivy. Oh, yeah, look at Ivy. Just one shot. One minute. Yeah. yeah. And then it's forced to fall off. and The fact that Shiv is 2k down in a 1v1 is also not ideal. I don't know if that's a matchup or yeah. just a player. That might be just a player. Player thing. matchup. It could also just be the way it's played, yeah. Yeah, big Because we're learning stuff, is, right? Yeah. Uh, the hero pool of these guys is not deep at all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, of course. No, like, most people just has two people. It's just yeah, early the days, game's right? like, even people who've been playing it in closed alpha is like a couple of months. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But yeah, like those, um, those kind of moments are the big moments that really swing at the team part of a MOBA, you know? It's not necessarily like, okay, the 1v1s where you die and stuff are, are not great, but it's stuff like we didn't go to lane two to fix it. Instead, we just chipped away at a tower and lane two became an absolute disaster. Yeah, And it's, we just ganked one lane where Great Talon could ult us and we lost. <clears throat> And so here, yeah, pushing, pushing, and taking camps. There's just so many camps. I know, I know the camps have just spawned, but in general, there's just so many camps up. Mm. So we want to push a lane that then gives us that wiggle room to take camps, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, those middle camps are probably too dangerous. Enemy camps definitely too dangerous. But mm -hmm. you should just Where never. Now, like these ones, yeah, you should never really have camps up. The top priority in terms of gold efficiency is no minions die to tower or no minions. Mm -hmm. um, well, really, no minion. The, the, the best case is no minions die where we're not there to collect them. And then the next best case is all the jungle is always down. So the fact that no one is going to be here to collect lane one and two means I don't care how this team fight goes. It's not worth it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Again, in League of Legends, it wouldn't be worth it. With the way the goal, the souls look, I don't think it's worth it. But it could be. But I doubt it. So the fact that two lanes crash in while we're trying to do something on lane four. Crash in up. Yeah, yeah. one and two both crash. And yeah. that will be a stack of multiple lanes of minions. And each wave is like as much as a kill or more. I can't remember. So you got like a one kill advantage, right? It was two for one in this mm -hmm. bot lane fight, maybe. And you lost two waves and actually a walker as well, which is, so which is we'll annoying for the flex spot. Top. Yeah, massively on top, hugely yeah. on top. I mean, uh, well, how about, how about let's, let, let's look at it, right? So jump, jump back uh, to before everyone groups up. So a little bit further, further. Uh, okay, let's say here. So seven minutes, 40. You're 4K mm -hmm. down. Now, skip forward, just, just, or, or go at times two or whatever. Yeah, so this fight happens. We actually win the fight. We, we kill more of them than they kill of oh, us. Oh, now 5, 5K down. Yeah, but it's not even over yet. It's still going. <laughs> Keep <Yeah>. going. <laughs> Keep playing. Because we're still grouped. We're still grouped. 
8K, 9K, 10K. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is what I mean. <laughs> Look, this is... Yeah. So even though we're winning this fight, we're still... Oh, that's such a bizarre... This is so new to me. What the this hell? Is <laughs> this is this is this is what movers are. So yeah, you win before, the fight and you lose nine k or something. Yeah, because before Valorant, I was in Overwatch. I'm like, oh yeah, winning a team fight, amazing, yeah. great. We've just capped the point. Doesn't but matter. Now, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Make, it, at this stage of the game, especially, you're just playing for gold and you're getting way less gold doing this. So it's so counterintuitive. What the hell? <laughs> it doesn't matter. And to be honest, they should also be taking all your jungle as well. Like they could be playing it better too. Yeah, of um, course. But let, let's keep going until you stop grouped up and see. Okay, you get a tower. Nice. You still don't have the other two, so you don't still don't have a flex slot. We've got a quarter of the lanes down. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so now... Yeah, so it is about 10k. Yeah. I think they don't play it particularly well, and they that grouping up more, costs you what? Yeah. You two or three k down before, so that grouping up costs you seven k. Yeah. It costs you seven k and a walker, which actually two walkers, by the way. So you it costs you seven k and a flex slot, and I think it genuinely could cost you more. And now it's already quite hard. But their group, they're five v they're, they're six and you for fun while Hayes is pushing a side lane because they're also, mm -hmm. this is the downside, right? Is that they also do mistakes. Sometimes you see it like that where they just don't group, but, and, and you get to see. But I'm pretty sure you can orchestrate those situations because people will overgroup. Mm. So 10 minutes, Soul Learn. I don't know how, how much you get from Soul Learn, do you know? I don't, I can't sure, I can, sure, I can just Google it. I just always forget. I looked up once and then I was like, well, that'll be it. Um, <laughs> then forget some. How much do you get for the soul? Um... Oh, the urn carrier gets extra souls. I didn't know that. Actually. Mm. Why is it not just the top thing that pops up? <laughs> well, they've just got it. So you can have a look if there's paradox man to deliver it or see. Yeah, sorry, I, I was distracted. Um, how did they get like again? So, so they're trying to do two things at once. Again, a, a standard rule for mobas: you don't do two things at once. Mm -hmm. Maybe in ten years, when you work out, you can find times to break those rules. But for now, so if we're pushing up a lane and we're also trying to run the earn over, that's two things at once. If we're letting Hayes push our entire lane one because all the towers are down on both sides that's something that we're doing so if we're doing something else yeah. at once it's still two things it's better to do one thing at 100 percent than two things at only 50 percent. yeah but also it's 6v6 so you'll never be able to have you you'll be outnumbered in one of those situations yeah either in the giving gold to someone case haze is just 1v2 or, or with 5v6 on the other side of that so you matched them and they they uh Oh, okay, he already deposited it. Hang on. He deposited it this then, right? Wait, so to jump back again, because I think again you might this might be another situation where they're gonna punish you for grouping. So they put two in, in lane four, you end up putting four there. Mm -hmm. The moment fifty four to forty seven, seven thousand gold is the difference. I don't know. You could argue that we're so far behind we can't stop and get the urn, but I don't think we're that far behind. I don't really know. But... So you're grouped like, up. You kill them, you kill them and steal kills. the urn. That'd be good for us. Yeah. If you 1v3, steal the urn. Is it just two... You delivered it. You hardly got anything. What the hell? Okay. So again, okay, so they don't really punish that. So you massively group up and they end up not, the, the goal kind of stays about equal, even though you mm. kill a bunch of people. It's just always like deal with shit first and then 
then do something. Yeah. Do something. Oh, that can go across the whole map. So maybe you don't even need to be in mid lane with Great Talon. It's still probably easier in lane phase, right? To be in mid lane and then. Mm. Sounds like an ADC, right? So. Yeah. I mean, so here, for example, like either Paradox or Great Talon needs to be in lane three collecting that. Like a wave dying to the tower is just really silly. Uh, that's lane two, lane three. That was just, I was just switch, switching for them. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah. So so for me, I mean, to be honest, from this game, the big thing I would look at is this grouping up situation. I think that's already... Well, I don't know. Uh, let, let's keep watching. But that, that for me is already a very te good teachable moment because it's like we grouped up and we won the fight and that's where you lost the game, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we won the fight, but... Like, uh, that's weird, yeah. Especially if a bunch of people are coming good. from like CS or stuff. Yeah, this guy, um, Vindicta, comes from Overwatch. Yeah. Um, yeah, this he's going to be much better at shooting. Or on that. <laughs> this guy uh, comes from Siege. Yeah. Um, no, this guy's Siege. Who? I can't see the name here. It's okay. It's okay. Like, it will just be, it's a very understandable situation, is what I'm saying. Mm. So, here, for example, like Ivy push lane two, from, from my point of view, that we should already be thinking who's the best to get gold on. Mm -hmm. Infernus is trying to hit that tower, and that tower is now going to die to Paradox, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. He's not going to get enough from that tower anyway. Yeah, but, uh, well, we do need the towers because we need the flex slot, but we should get them as a team or yeah. or at least get them as a cross map. But we, to get them as a team, we need to group up. But to group up, we need to lay the foundation. Yeah, yeah. So you push first, then you do stuff. And probably we want to be pushing lanes like two, three, four, and then grouping up on lane one to get that tower. But... Mm. Yeah. I mean, it is much faster, right? So you, I think you're going to have more situations where you can ignore these rules, but it is definitely worth knowing them properly. Because, like, can you see the, the KDA, for example? Like the kills and deaths, tab. sorry. Hmm? If I hit tab, I can, like, if I do at any point. Okay. Because it wouldn't shock me if it's actually fairly close, or you might even be ahead of kills. But the game's not very close. Yeah. And then they're, they're going to win a few enough. big team fights. Yeah. So now we're going for a team fight with Infernus having to clear the side lane. Whereas we want Infernus in the team fight because he's a carry. But also, we just want six people in the team fight because now Hayes yeah. is going to oh. come in at the end and it doesn't matter who it is. So, so if we jump back again and, and watch that sequence. So, again, th this is where you probably kind of literally lose the game, even though the, the goal lead was so big already. Mm -hmm. So. Someone's going to need to clear lane one, and whoever it is actually can get a shit ton of gold, so it'd be great if it was a carry. So Furnace is going to go clear lane two and one, hopefully. Well, we lose a lane on, away from lane two. Like here, I would just let them have, like, pause. There's no way that mid, mid boss is worth this. There's just no chance. Just because of how far up. All three. three, three of your lanes need to be cleared, yeah. So, like, even if you win this fight and you... Probably, well, the first thing is you won't win the fight. You're, you're behind, but also you're outnumbered because Hayes can move easier because she's pushed in the wave. And also she's going to actually get a really good, really good angle on, on Vindicta. Mm -hmm. But even if you win the fight and get mid-boss, I would guess that actually just dealing with these lanes is going to give you more gold, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. And, and, would you say that's the case even if the mid-boss was good? Uh, it... Depends. Or is it hard to speculate? I, I, it's, it's hard to speculate. It depends what they changed about it. So the big mm. thing about Baron, for example, and actually the thing they changed about Baron, I was about to say recently, this is probably more like eight years ago. <laughs> the thing they changed about Baron at some point was Baron used to give you a buff that made your minions slightly better, so you could push a little bit better, and it gave you a lot of stats. Mm. Uh, APAD and like heal and region i can't remember um so that you could then win the fight but actually that wasn't good enough to close out the game and so people were taking it less and less and so what they changed was now baron makes your minions really good and it gives you a few stats like it doesn't it doesn't actually change how strong you are in a fight but it's so crucial because it allows you to push in the base and crack the base mm -hmm. so the thing that's weird about this mid boss is that it doesn't even, it, as far as I know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it gives you a shit ton of stats I didn't even realize, but 
I think as far as I know, it just gives you the half half your respawn timer, which is great, but it doesn't really make you win the fight. And it also yeah. doesn't make you push the pace quicker. So f- for me, I, it, it depends what they changed. But I, I would say there's no, there's no situation unless mid boss is completely uh, imbalanced. If this is barren, you don't take it. If this, I don't know what the one in Dota is, but I'm pretty sure a Dota pro will look at this and say it's not worth it. Mm. Like, because it would have to be so broken to be better than clearing three lanes and potentially even pushing one long and also potentially clearing two level three camps, which have both just been sitting there for ages. Like you can get so many souls. You can catch up the soul lead while they're doing mid boss. If you, I think if you do it like this, it's, it's crazy when you start doing this kind of thing and and it happens in in league all the time. Um, Like you'll be working with someone and, and Eddie Carey, for example, I remember at one point we were working with, I was working with someone who is very good, but we used to be not particularly good from an economy point of view. And so we just mm-hmm. watched who was the best Eddie Carey at the, in the world at the time, who was also like, his team always just played for him. And he, like, if he, he won V9s or we lose. Um, <laughs> and we just started doing that and looking that actually what he does mostly is he finds situations like this, like Infernus, and he says, protect me, protect me, protect me. I'm pushing this, I'm pushing this. And you literally see it on their map. It's just like ping, 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 ping. Like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Help me, help me. Like, and his help is just stand and watch me so I can get, so I can clear this. Um, and do and they have to be right next to him to help him or can it be like in the situation it, where they're doing a big distraction? Mostly they fog, mostly they fog. So especially in this, they shouldn't be there. No one should be there cl- oh. denying. Um, fog, sorry, they're just close. Okay. They're close and they're there if someone comes. Um, but anyway, the point of this story was it literally like just completely changed everything. Because in a situation like this, Infernus pushes this out, takes that level three camp, takes the other camp, and he gets an entire item, probably. Mm. It's not like I'm a little bit stronger. It's like I can go even maybe a tier three item or like a, a tier four item even. Um so yeah, that, that that's the thing, and and even if even if it was just one lane, I think it's already a difficult decision because the group up is hard, and it's five v six, so you shouldn't be there anyway, probably. But especially when it's three lanes, like you just leave this, like uh, yeah, and and to your question earlier, actually, the more I think about it, even if mid boss was amazing, I, I think there would no way to con- there's no way to contest it because it's going to be five v six. Are you able to quantify how many lanes should we have pushed up before we go for a play or is it well in 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 an ideal situation they don't actually need to be pushed up like we're talking about so Mm -hmm. you want to have all lanes in a good position for you so a good Mm -hmm. position for us is yes pushed up or pushing back towards us okay so if, if, if either of those are things are if all the lanes are met with that then you can group up for free. You can group up without losing anything. Um, mm-hmm. As long as you're back before the waves actually crash at your tower. <laughs> so you need to make sure that when you do that first play, just like we saw in League of Legends, you need to make sure that when you do that team fight, everyone's instantly legging it afterwards to our base to clear our yeah. minions <laughs> rather than being like, oh, now we can take mid boss. Oh, now we can take a walker. And it's like, now you're just yeah, bleeding. Clear the first and yeah. then go back. Yeah, exactly. So got to re- reset the phone. Okay. So yeah, so yeah in, in, in this situation, um, yeah, uh, Infernus can clear this and push the whole way, but also we need to clear four and, and two as well. So well, there's, there's, we definitely need to clear all of these. Um, but, what would be kind of ideal is you put more people on two and three who don't mind splitting the gold as much. And mm-hmm. you make sure that they kind of, as soon as they push one wave, they, they go towards Infernus, then they go back towards lane, lane two to push the next wave, then towards Infernus and then back. So you don't wait until someone stops your carry getting the gold. You go towards him close enough so you're not stealing gold, but you're there to help preemptively. Yeah, yeah that, and that's what, you, that's what we mean by fogging. Um, okay. Well, staying out of vision as well is an important part in League of Legends, but here I think it's it's less important. Yeah, so Haze, that's another thing you could look at. Haze has 13k souls. Mm-hmm. Um, 
if you put this on times two, this this VOD, and we jump back, um, we jump back, I don't know, maybe even 10 minutes, let's say, to four minutes into the game. Or let's ju just jump back five minutes and see see what the gold lead is. Sure, right, right here. Yeah, so now it's 2K, a 2K lead for Hayes. Okay, so that's already a decent amount. Uh, so jump back a little bit more. Okay, so now it's basically equal, right? Hayes and, mm -hmm. Hayes and uh, who's Abrams you were leaning against? Was leaning against? Yeah. But now just look at Hayes and see what they do. So they push only a little bit to go and take a camp. Then they come back and clear. Then when there's no minions to clear, it's still pre-seven minutes so they can share. So they push. And this is where, this is our first big overgrouping. Yeah, because we see them pushing and we want to try and gank them to prevent them from pushing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we just want to, so our reaction shouldn't be to prevent them from pushing, our reaction should be to push harder somewhere else? Um, it depends. The The thing that you're doing here really is you're just massively overcommitting resources to stop them pushing. Okay. That's the problem. So Hayes is dead here. Hayes is equal gold, okay? Eight minutes, equal gold with Abrams. Now just forget everyone else, just look at Hayes. So Hayes is going to mm -hmm. come back and join this fight to try and protect the, the Kelvin actually going to get instantly pushed back again so now they're going to go and do the camps while there's no minions waiting for the minions to come all the way to her now she's going to push this and i think going to push all the way to your guardian that would be my guess now it's still equal by the way now mm -hmm. was too scared to push up until people showed so now people showed so now Hayes equal is between the Hayes and the abrams right yeah yeah now 1k okay now gonna push one more wave probably looks like yeah so far has joined no fights and is now 2k up now gonna go back to take jungle camps mm. it's gonna take one jungle camp now take another lane She's left that other lane. Paradox doesn't stay to clear it as well. We just let Hayes farm by themselves. Mm -hmm. It's post 10 minutes. Now Hayes has got a 2k gold lead. She joins this fight for fun and dies. So it's not playing well in any stretch of the imagination. You know? <laughs> like, this is it's an absolutely ridiculous fight to join. You're not going to 1v4. You're not going to 1v4. And also, as we talked about from the other team's point of view, you're absolutely nailing it. Like, it's easy. Okay, so now they might pick up some kills. So this might be actually where it came from. So now, again, 2K. That's, that's, that didn't even... See, even that, like I thought she was going to join a team fight and suddenly get loads of kills and it was going to mm -hmm. invalidate what I was saying. But actually, she doesn't even get that much gold. She joined that team fight and went from 1.5K to 2K ahead. But now pushes that lane. I don't know why people aren't taking tier three camps, by the way. They're really easy at this stage of the game. I don't know why people mm -hmm. are acting like they're ridiculously hard to take. But she goes and takes jungle. The tier three ones are the ones with the two long markers. Two, yeah. So, one, so two, it's, for example, on Bebop, one, you two, should go yeah. and take a tier three camp the second it spawns because your ult kills it in one go. Mm -hmm. And it's worth ulting for a tier three camp. But How many es especially now, like, tier three camp be worth? I can't remember. I think it's like. like 400 souls maybe even i can't remember it's a lot and it's guaranteed mm. so now she takes camps and then she goes to push side lane and because it's haze she has the smoke bomb she can actually push up further than most people so she gets your walker while you're grouped yeah now you're in a situation where she's got 4k gold lead now and now she comes and joins the fight because Wraith got ridiculously ahead in the lane phase, which is why I wanted to look at... She was equal four minutes ago, and now mm. she's got 6k gold lead. Soul lead. And it just... And she doesn't play well. <laughs> it's just being a little bit efficient with some of the camps. Like, I'm dying... Okay, I'm literally dying for her to take this tier 3 camp. I don't know why she's not still not taking it. <laughs> 
at this stage of the game when you've got 17k yeah when you've got 17k souls i don't know why i mean when you get ricochet for example on vidictor uh, sorry on on haze you take these camps in like five ten seconds like the big camps so i don't know why (laughs) at this stage it's not enough to at least take them a bit you know if you've got the active reload thing with your dagger you can like take them all like instantly Okay, finally, now she's going to go take them. No, she's not. Now she's going to come around to play for a fight. Yeah. Sorry, the court is just dead then. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. So then they win the fight, but they've got 30-something case holds at this stage. Mm. Advantage. So even then, like, I don't think they're doing it well, but they're at least doing the stuff that we're talking about, right? Like they're letting the haze be just greedy and run around and try and get as much souls as possible. Mm-hmm. And they're letting the Wraith do the same. So their lowest person is behind some of your people, but it doesn't matter because their lowest person is Kelvin. But they're two people and, and, and Paradox, to be honest. This is the downside of having a bunch of carries is that one of them is going to be Paradox with 15k is not as good as Ivy with 12k, I would guess. Again, actually, even that, I'm not sure. Technically, it could be that support items are ridiculously hard to get. And normally, supports would be people who either have cheaper items, which obviously doesn't exist in this game, but probably scale less, which means... Actually, Ivy scales quite well. Which, but, I mean, it depends on the build. The point is, is that the abilities of, like, Viscous or someone supposed mm-hmm. to be... It's not really balanced yet, so it's not really like this, but are supposed to be better um, just by themselves. You know, really a stun more. stuns someone. If you have yeah. a million souls, it stuns them. If you have zero souls, it stuns them. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, the, that's the, the, the hope that this game is balanced around that, I would assume, because they didn't make a big fuss about the fact that they were removing roles. They acted like they have roles. So yeah. I'm assuming that's how they have roles in, in a MOBA. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, the, the, I, I think the, the big moments are like the, the one to look at in the lane would be how much we get fucked over by not helping out lane two. And then the one, the most important one is to look at that. Look, we grouped up, we won the fight and we lost 7k souls. And yes, there's other reasons you lost this game. And yes, the big fight where you also lost mid boss looks like the one that kind of made the gold lead impossible but isn't it interesting that we grouped up and won the fight and it was horrible for us the worst moment of the game in one moment uh, in terms of in terms of soul swings up to that point was something that you could actually conceivably look at and think it was good you know mm. you say right we won this fight how did the game feel so hard we won that really great fight when we thought we were falling behind and then we we won this great fight and we also got a tower we got a guardian great aren't we amazing <laughs> but then you look and you're like ah actually <laughs> that <That's> was <laughs> the worst moment somehow um, so yesterday we had a scrim we started off we thought it was really well because mm. we killed a tower early on but that's mm. not really it's killing the towers it should be low on our priority list oh my gosh i'm clicking me now what the hell it's a big clusterfuck um <laughs> We yeah. were like, oh, yeah, no, we, we won that. We got that tower, but then it all went downhill from there. Well, no, I, we in hindsight, we probably shouldn't have focused that tower. We should have pushed up that lane and then gone off focusing the farm, and that's the value, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean the, the advantage of losing a tower, of getting a tower, is it gives you souls, right? Again, I don't know how many souls it gives you. So it might be worth it just because of the amount of souls it gives. Um, it denies them the shop, which is kind of hard to quantify, but important. Yeah. Um, I don't think all that important, but important. Eventually, it's going to be super important to get your flex slot. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that it means is that they have to, you can play with a longer lane. So they have to wait longer before they go and clear it because they haven't got a tower to run back to to protect them. Yeah, And you can push it deeper, which means you can leave for longer. So if you're not leaving properly and you're not denying their, you know, you can get easier access to their jungle, for example, Mm -hmm. which is also another thing. Um, But 
I wouldn't necessarily think it's the best thing to do to, to if always you, if take you the can towel. leave for longer then there's just more stuff you can do that's yeah not, yeah if you can leave and this is why thinking about it like time I think is, is better than than just conceptualizing it as on or off because if you can leave for 10 seconds you do 10 seconds worth of stuff if you leave for 20 seconds you can literally time it you can leave mm. for 20 seconds like for example it's not applicable in this game probably in, in deadlock probably but a big problem that newer teams have and sometimes less new teams fuck up occasionally <laughs> is like group resets so one person resets and then as they're running back out on the map the next person resets and as they're running back out on the map the next person resets running back out on the map and you actually if you want to if you're conceptualizing it as time what you can actually do and i've done before is you start a timer when the first person starts channeling recall and you end the timer uh, you can just pause it while i just finish this point mm -hmm. and i think we'll, we'll wrap up um you, you end the timer when the last person comes back out of the base and you say, okay, guys, we were playing 4v5 for like two minutes. So obviously we lost. <laughs> obviously we lost <laughs> a lot because we're just not recalling at the same time. And actually those teams that I showed you at the beginning, the team that won that final, Hanwha Life, when they played each other in the last game of the regular season, lost the whole game just from doing this. They just group reset mm -hmm. badly and there was two minutes when it was 4v5 and during that time, the enemy team just got too big a lead, and that was it. So, that you know, they still they still do it, but like, yeah, th thinking about time can be very useful. So, we were grouped up for 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 two minutes, um, and this is how much we lost. Basically, yeah, is something that that can be. We can didn't lay useful. that foundation first the, to give us that time to group. Yeah. Up. The thing that I just noticed near the end that might make things even easier to conceptualize is as your minions push down the lane, the colored line extends. Yeah, that's indicate. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing that's great about that is even if the wave is pushing back towards you, if it's still in their half, you still have a long line. Mm. So how about before we group up, all the lines are past halfway? I think that yeah, could be a simple, a simple rule because if the line is past halfway, the lane is in a good spot, probably. Because your three yeah. options is it's it's on their half and pushing towards them, which is the worst of all the options, but it's still fine because it's going to crash soon. They're going to have to deal with it soon and probably it's dangerous to go and fix it. So it's still fine. You shouldn't do anything about it. Or it's literally crashing on their tower, which is like the best. It's the beginning of the sequence where we will lose nothing or it's pushing back towards us, in which case it's also fine because we're losing nothing and we will have to go and get it in a bit, but we don't have to get it yet. So actually the, those colors could be really useful. So for example, the second time you're grouping around mid boss, one of the lanes was pushed, but, and two of them were in the middle, but one of them was still back on our side. And probably what will happen is firstly, they'll buff mid boss, I would guess a lot. Mm -hmm. And secondly, people will realize, okay, Mid boss is worth sacrificing one lane, but not two. So if we have two pushed in, we have to fix one before we even go and fight mid boss. Or, or I don't know what the numbers will be, but there'll be like a a specific amount, I think. Mm. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much, John.